beautiful to address you. It's wonderful to see you. You're, you're, you're God's chosen. <laughs> you're students of the great word. Uh, you, will be, you will be teachers of the great word. I often say in my lectures that God needs right now one million new teachers to teach the word of God. Uh, there is great spiritual illiteracy in the earth and men needs to know the truth because the Bible says it is the truth that sets them free. Truth sets you free from fears. Uh, truth sets you free from superstitions. Uh, truth, truth sets you free from, uh, from error. In, in every domain of uh, slavery, truth comes in and sets you free. It's like the light. Uh, before we entered this auditorium, it was possibly dark, and uh, someone pushed a button, and there came uh, the light, and, and darkness retreated. I couldn't tell you exactly where it went. It just retreated. That The light was so overwhelming until the darkness ceased to be. Neighbors, that's what God's power can do. Yeah, that, that's what God's strength can do. And, and uh, it can be so strong and so forceful and that evil will retreat from it. Just say, hey, 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 I'm getting out of the way, you see. And, and that's what you and I uh, should be very well, uh, very well uh, uh, acquainted with. Now, in these lessons, we, we, are, we are studying uh, demons and deliverance, uh, principalities and powers. We're studying it out of this great textbook that I wrote myself. This is different from other books. It costs a little more than other books. It's handmade. It's not machine made. It's handmade. And, and when you open it, it just falls open there. On, on one side, you can put all your notes. And on the other side, uh, you, you, you have your, your study. And uh, we we're studying in our last lesson about the, the, the origin of Satan. Uh, where did he come from? And, and were we ever really excited about it? We were really exciting about it. In this lesson, we're going to study the origin of demons. Now, now uh, 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 demons are really the cohorts uh, of the devil. They are his angels, they, his, his fallen angels. So when he fell through his pride over his personal beauty, the Bible says in Ezekiel 28, uh, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. It said he had the fullness of wisdom. And by the reason of thy brightness, he says, I'll cast you down. And so when he came down, he brought with him this, this mighty army uh, of, uh, of angels. He was, the, uh, he, he was one that led the, the music, the, 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 the singing, the praising uh, in, in heaven. He was in charge of the devotions of heaven. <laughs> and he fell. He fell because the Bible says he looked upon his own beauty and saw it was so great. And, uh, and that he, he saw that he had such wisdom and that he wanted a higher position in heaven and was ready to fight for it. And he lost. Now you say, but now being a loser, uh, he's lost his power. Now in, in the little book of Jude, if you'd like to open your Bible there, it's the next book to the book of Revelation. At the end of your Bible, it only has one chapter. In verse 9, we read there where Michael... Uh, the Bible says is one of the archangels of heaven and, and a person of great strength, of great power, of great position in heaven, that he refused to face to face rebuke Satan in a dispute that they had over the body of Moses. Over the body of Moses. Even in his fallen state, Satan is still one of the greatest and keenest personalities ever created. And, and, and when he got into controversy, over just the body of Moses, uh, he said, the Lord rebuked thee. It says he dared not bring reeling accusation against Satan. He says, the Lord uh, rebuked thee. He is still a dignitary. Uh, he is an archangel fallen from his original state. Now, if I were to fall in sin, you could say there is Pastor Sumrall uh, without a church, <laughs> divested of all the privileges of the church, uh, uh, down to the bottom, uh, you see, but once a pastor, now, now that's what you can say of this creature, once an archangel, once a leader in heaven, and, and now he uh, uh, is still a dignitary, you know, and, and that would be true of a pastor. Uh, when you saw him walking, you say, there walks a man of strength, and there walks a man of knowledge, and, and, and there, there walks a man, but he's lost something, you see. Well, that's what you have to say of Satan. Now, remember, the Bible teaches us that Lucifer, uh, who is the devil, that he is a real person. Now, in 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary. Now, an adversary is a real thing. It is a real, 
real thing. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he's not a sheep. <laughs> you better believe it. Uh, with, with, a, with the strength of a lion, and with the leadership of a lion, he's a king of the jungle. He knows he's the king of the jungle. Nobody has to say, walk up and say, hey, Mr. Lion, did you know you're the king? Yeah, he knows it without you telling him anything. And the devil knows the position that he lost in heaven. And he knows how much greater he is uh, than, than a human person on the face of this earth. So he walks about as a roaring lion, uh, but not to bless, not to help, not to love. He says, seeking whom he may devour. Now that is in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 8. And so in the Bible, like in the book of Revelation, personal names are given to him. So he is not just an influence, as some people would have us to believe. Personal acts are attributed to him and ascribed to him, as I read to you from Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verses 12 to, to 15 in our last study. Uh, Jesus dealt with the devil as a person. You must know that. Uh, that is in, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, where he was tempted of the devil. They talked together. They talked to one another. And, and so uh, he addressed him as a person. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. You see? And so he addressed him as a person. Jesus waged war on Satan as a person. That's in Luke's gospel, chapter 13 and verse 16. Paul in his epistles fought with Satan as a real person. You read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, that they, the weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God uh, to the tearing down of strongholds. And, and, and then he says uh, that we, we, we fight not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, you see. And, and so a real person is there. The devil has been spoken of as having a heart, yeah, feeling, pride, speech, knowledge, power, desire, lust, and many other solical parts. He has solical passions and, and, and solical faculties. Now, not only do we have to believe in him and understand him, but in, in today's lesson, we are dealing with the, those that work with him called fallen angels in the Word of God. And they are called demons in the Word of God, but not, not in the Word of God. The word demons is not in the Bible as, as, a, as a word of itself. But the Bible teaches that apart from Satan, the prince and the power of the air, there exist evil spirits of a lesser degree than he is. A, a lesser degree of leadership, lesser degree of power, and they are subservient to him. They, 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 they are bound uh, to him in a trust that they have to obey him. That They, they have a, a relationship that they cannot break. <laughs> they cannot say, well, I'm tired of serving you, I'm going to serve somebody else. They, they are slaves, and they are in bondage to him. And their designation as demons is from the Greek word, uh, diabolos, uh, meaning adversary, or meaning false accuser, or meaning slanderer, you see. And so uh, we wish to introduce to you uh, uh, the origin of these spirits that are under the devil, uh, uh, lesser than he is, and that they fulfill uh, his desires upon human beings. Now, where did they come from? Uh, we know where Satan came from. We have studied that in a full lesson. In Satan's rebellion in heaven, he drew with him a great multitude of the lesser, the lesser celestial beings. And in, in the Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4, and it says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. And, and so one-third of those beautiful angels, one-third of them, uh, were, were pulled out of their location and pulled out of their socket and, and pulled out of their divine relationship and followed him miserably down into destruction. And so they, they are followers of the devil. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25 and verse 41, uh, these are called uh, the devil's angels. Uh, that's what Jesus wants to call them. In Matthew's Gospel, 25 and 41. Uh, these unconfined, they are in the air around, uh, they, they live by the air. Uh, they are spirits, but they do not have corporality as a human has. And so uh, these angels, unconfined, uh, most of them, some, some are confined that we'll possibly talk to you about later. Uh, wicked spirits, uh, they are in uh, Satan's kingdom and under his dominion that they must take their directions directly from him. Uh, they are his emissaries, they are his subjects, and they are so numerous that they make his power practically unlimited all over the face of this earth. 
if there are four and a half billion people living today, he's got one for each person living on the face of this earth that can torment, that can hurt, and in and, and many ways as, as we're going to teach you. Now, what would be the nature of these fallen spirits, our, 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 our demons? Um, the first thing you have to recognize, I'm sure, is that they are personalities. Uh, by a personality, I mean they have an identity uh, as to what they are. They, they, have a, they have something within them that makes you to know uh, that, they, that just as a human has a personality and has certain desires and none desires, that these creatures, uh, these fallen angels from heaven, that they have a personality uh, that they wish to, uh, to, to reveal. They want to reveal what they are. And we're going to show you exactly how that works. A human is a personality with a corporate body. They are personalities without a corporate body. So these demon spirits are, are, are personalities uh, that have a personality all of their own. Every one of them is different. Uh, but they do not have corporate existence here on the... And they want that. They, they want a manifestation uh, on the face of this earth. They cannot be seen with a natural eye. Uh, many people have seen them in, uh, with their spiritual eye. Uh, as fallen spirits, they, they want and desire and work toward having a body in order to have an earthly manifestation. They want to destroy all that God has done. They want to destroy all the good that is on the face of this earth. And therefore, they need a human manifestation in order to do this, you see? They need a human manifestation. Throughout God's Word, we find that these evil spirits are indwelling human bodies. They, 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 a spirit come and lives on the inside of a human manifestation in, in order that they might have expression. That if there's a, a spirit of hate, he comes and gets into a human being, and that human hates and doesn't know why he hates. <laughs> he is motivated by something besides his own, his own self. And so that is the way that they function. These are fallen spirits, and essentially and irretrievably evil. They cannot be good. They have not They've never been good since they left heaven. And, and so they are malevolent creatures, evil, evil, evil creatures. They are angry with God because they lost their estate in heaven. They stay angry because they have lost their, their, their beautiful place in paradise, lost it completely because they followed the wrong leadership. They followed the devil, and he told them a lie, told them he's going to take heaven, and he was going to exalt his throne and would promote them, and they, they lost their promotion. They're angry with God because of their lost estate. Uh, their, their prime motive on the face of this earth is to destroy what God loves and what God creates, and that's mostly you. You see, it's you they want to destroy. It's you they want to hurt. It's you that they want to, to, to cause every kind of evil possible to come into your existence. So since God loves the human race, every immortal creature, uh, more than he does anything else, he loves you better than he does the mountains, better than he does the seas, better than he does the stars. You see, you're the chief love. Uh, God gave his unspeakable gift to you, you see. I, you can speak of the mountains, you can speak of the sea, you can speak of the stars, but nobody's ever fully described Jesus yet. Uh, you see, he is God's unspeakable gift. And so since God loves you, and, and, uh, and, and has given you the unspeakable gift, every demon in hell and out of hell, every demon out of heaven, <laughs> every demon in the, that lives in the air uh, under their principality, the, the devil is a prince uh, of the air, that lives there, they want to destroy you. You. Sometimes they destroy, um, uh, they, they destroy the earth, they, just, they, they destroy cities. Uh, uh, it's, it's very possible that terrible weather that destroys uh, has Satan as a background of the thing, you know, of, of a destroyer. When one becomes a believer and a militant Christian, I'd like to dwell on that for some time, uh, a militant Christian. We're not just average Christians. Uh, we're not just uh, do-goodies. <laughs> we're not just been saved and sitting on a seat and ready to go to heaven. We are, we are, we are soldiers in the king's army. Uh, we, are, we are winners in a great battle. And, and the battle is between good and evil. It's the battle that began uh, in the heavenlies. It's a cosmic battle that began between God and one of his archangels. And we are still part of that battle until it's totally won and he is cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. And so we are militant Christians. And, and we are in a constant warfare with God's adversary. Now, the only reason that he is our adversary is because we're on God's side. You see, that's the only purpose there is in it. You say, well, where do these spirits live? Well, Satan's uh, methods of activity and, and his highly organized empire of roving spirits in the universe, in the heavenlies, 
I recorded in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 and verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities. A principality is an area over which a prince rules. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, and so the abode of these spirits is in the, in the air that is above us. It can be called the second heaven. The earth here is the first heaven. The air above us is the second heaven. And the third heaven is where God exists and where, and where God lives. Now, his, his methods are, are suggested by the expression, the wiles of the devil. That's in Ephesians 6 and 11. That means that he's tricky. That means he is a deceiver. That means he wants to hurt you more than you can ever imagine anyone being hurt. He wants to reach out there and hurt you in every way that he possibly can. His organization is, uh, is uh, graduated from small to bigger and bigger. Uh, if you've ever had a ministry and laying on of hands and setting people free from demon spirits, the very weakest spirit that we've ever found is, is a spirit of deafness that almost anybody can deliver anybody from a spirit of deafness if he wants to. Uh, just, just, just if you do it in the right command, just say, spirit of deafness, come out. And he's so weak, he'll come out. He'll come sneaking back in if they don't keep him out. Uh, you have to fight to, you know, say you can't come back anymore. Resist him so that he can't come back anymore. But they're, they're, his organization has graduated uh, from high ones uh, uh, to low ones. Uh, it contains uh, principalities, an area over which a prince lives. Uh, there will be a prince in Asia. Uh, there, there, there will be a prince in Babylon. Uh, there will be a prince in Indonesia. Uh, you know, uh, that will rule. There will be a prince in France, a prince over New York City. And these are ruling spirits that rule the others underneath them. And so it's divided up into principalities of powers. The Bible says world rulers of this darkness and, and over spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. And, and so he has a whole military machine from a buck private to a general. And, and, and he rules uh, with a highly organized uh, uh, organization of seeking to hurt and to hinder anything that God wants to do on the face of this earth. It is in the heavenlies above the earth that Satan and his angels or demons have their abode and their base of operations. Now, now not having corporality, uh, it, they have no, 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 they can move through a solid and they can, they can live there in, in this area uh, w without any, anything solid like to stand on like this. Uh, they don't need that at all. Now you see, you have said a lot about uh, Satan and about uh, the demons that followed him. Uh, who, who, who all believes this? Well, uh, Jesus was the main teacher in the whole of the Bible. At least 15 times in the, in, in the, in the Gospels, the Lord Jesus Christ gave a, a complete lesson on the existence of demons and how to handle them. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse 20 through, uh, 22 through verse 28, it told how he cast demons out of peoples, out of, out of many peoples. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 1, he commanded his disciples to cast them out. Also in Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 1. The Lord Jesus Christ viewed his conquest over them as the same as over Satan. And now that's in Luke chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. So the Lord believed in, in these things, and he taught in these things. And so therefore, we follow his teaching. If he's right, and if he is the way, the truth, and the life, then he is the truth. And if you want truth on this matter, he is the soul and solitary uh, area and, and source of truth to be given to you. And, and so uh, uh, we must understand that. We must know that. The apostles that came after, uh, after the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, they believed and taught re regarding deliverance uh, from demon power. In Revelation 9 and 20, uh, we say that they declared they, their e existence. And so the apostles believed in the existence of demons. This was the apostle John uh, writing to you at that time. And in Luke ch chapter 4 and verse 33, th th their very nature is described. So not only the existence, but their nature is shown that they have a, a very particular nature of what they are. And in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, their activity is described. Their activity is described. So you have an existence, a nature, an activity, and also in Revelation 16 and 14. I hope you have the teaching syllabus that you can follow me very carefully. We're on page 8 at the bottom of the page. And then uh, it's mentioned their expulsion from human beings. 
uh, that you can cast them out. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 42, I'm showing how they can be removed from a human person and they cannot any longer hurt that person. In Matthew 12 and 26 and Ephesians 6 and 12, you find here the organization that they have. That they have organization among them. And in Luke 8 and 31, it indicates their abode. And also in Revelation 9 and 11. And in Matthew 25 and 41, the Lord Jesus points out their final doom that they will be in forever. And so you, you, must, you must see that the Bible is very explicit. You don't have to guess at it. You don't have to say maybe so. And you don't have to say this means that. No, it means exactly what it says. And it says exactly what it means. Now we come to the crux of this thing. And I do hope you have a teaching syllabus here. Uh, because we're at point six on, on, on page nine. The names that are given to these spirits in the Bible. Now, I, I have found a lot of other names as I travel around the world. I had a, a, a spirit to say, I am the spirit of blood, you know, uh, that I've come against you. I am the spirit of blood. And I have to say, spirit of blood, I, I come against you uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ and by his mighty power and, uh, and, upon, and, and upon the prerogatives of the Great Commission that he said to me that I must go and to cast you out. So I have come to cast you out because I have been commanded to do so. And we talk to them just that way. They understand. They understand. Whatever country I'm in, whether it's China, uh, Japan, or in Indonesia, uh, the devils all speak good English. Yeah, you know, I've never found one yet that didn't say, oh, what do you say, what do you say? Yeah, they know what I say, and they understand it very well. All right, now we're into something very big here. There are many names in the Bible, in, in, in God's holy word, that identifies evil spirits. And, and our Lord Jesus used a number of them himself. Now, I, I mentioned that specifically so that you'll, you'll know that if the Lord Jesus said it, then it must be true, you know. You, you can't go backwards on that. You have to accept that. And so now, let's look at a, look, a list of references. Uh, well, let's take the Old and the New Testament and, and see some of the names. Because this was interesting. <laughs> and, and, and Luke's Gospel, chapter 13 and verse 11, there is a spirit called a spirit of infirmity. Did you know I meet people that have gone through all the clinics and have gone through all the hospitals and no doctor can find anything wrong with them and they're still sick? And if the doctor only had a little teaching on this, my height would help him. There are people that have a spirit of infirmity. They're sick here, they're sick here, they're sick here, they're sick here, they're sick <laughs> all over, but a doctor can't find it because it's not physical. There is an infirmity placed inside of them that the devil has brought onto that person. Isn't that amazing? A spirit of infirmity. Now, this will surprise you, and, I, and I, 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 I wish to qualify it to be very careful. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, and verse 25, uh, the Lord Jesus says there it was a deaf and a dumb spirit. Now, I must stop right here very carefully and say all deaf people are not, are not, do not have a deaf spirit. Uh, you can receive deafness from a blow, or some people are born deaf, and uh, from, a, from a high fever, from sickness. And so we want you to know that we do not in any ways believe that anybody that's deaf, anybody that's dumb is, is possessed because we do not believe that. But the Lord Jesus specifically said here in Mark 9 and 25, and whether you believe it or not, that's your problem, you see. Uh, he says that there was a deaf and a dumb spirit, and he cast it out. There was a spirit that that spirit came inside and closed up the ears and, and, and that he closed up the, the tongue and, and they couldn't hear and they couldn't speak. And Jesus said, come out. And then they could hear and then they could speak. And I, I'm, I'm just teaching you the word of the Lord and that these are Bible names that are given to demon spirits that are active on the face of this earth. Uh, one of the very unusual names of a spirit of this nature is that we find here on page 9 under what is called C. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12 and verse 43, also Mark chapter 1, verse 23, also Luke uh, chapter 9, and verse 42, it says that there was an unclean spirit. Now, do you know this spirit is mentioned 22 times? 22 times we come against a thing called an unclean spirit. Isn't that something? Now, this uncleanness, this uncleanness, now, I, I, I believe, could be a, a spiritual uncleanness. That's right. Dirty in the spirit, you know, a spiritual, it could be, uh, it, it could be a solical uncleanness, unclean in the mind, unclean in the emotions, unclean in the willpower, and it could also be a physical uncleanness. Do, do you know people that are demon possessed oftentimes will not wash their body? They will not wash their body. Their body stinks, you see, 
because the devil will not let them clean up their body. He loves uncleanness. Now, the Bible says that they are spirits that are called unclean spirits, and that I'm sure that they could function in three worlds. In the world of spirit, to make you unclean in your spiritual parts, uh, in your solical parts, to make you unclean in your mind and your emotions and in your will, and unclean in the physical parts. My, 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 what a truth. What a, what a, what a truth. These spirits are loose today. They are functioning in the world today, and, and they are very active in the world today, and they can be cast out by God's children today. <laughs> they can be removed from a human being today. May I bless you. Now, Lord, I want to say thank you for the Word of God that sets us free. I want to thank you for this great topic, this tremendous subject, this exciting thing that gets us so excited until, who we just want to go forth and set men and women and children free from the devil's power. He is a usurper. He has no rights to be in human beings. He has no right to hurt people. He has no right to bring disease upon people. He has no right to bring his uncleanness, his filth, and place it upon people. So now, Lord, we just pray right now that you will bless my neighbors and friends and set them free and bless our great class and teach them the great truths to set millions of people free by God's mighty power. Let it be, and we thank God for it.